All right, so here we are with video two, and we're going to talk about sampling techniques. Now, as an ecologist, you're going to want to know how many of each organism are there, and that can be tricky because it's you know the animals run away on you, and you might have a very large area to count. And yeah, so we use sampling techniques as a way to estimate as best we can. All right, so basically, why do we do it? Uh, one ecology requires us to know how many of everything's there. Okay, it's just you need to know what makes up your community before you can really talk about it in too much detail. Now it's it's way too time consuming um, to count every single one, or it's impossible depending on what it is you're dealing with. So we use samples to estimate the size. For example, over here we've got our actual population. They've collected a bunch of them. That's your sample and they can use that to estimate what's in there. Now, it may not be very accurate or it may be super accurate, depending on, we'll get to how to make it more accurate in a minute. Um, but basically there are various techniques for different purposes. So we've got one, the two we're gonna focus on. One is really good for plants and things that don't move around. Another is really good for things that like to run away from you. Um, all right, so sampling must be, it must have these two characteristics. It must be random. Okay, this reduces the bias, and this is really, really important with all science, okay, but it must be random, and it must be representative. So you need a large enough sample uh, to improve the accuracy. So you want roughly 10% of the population, as close as you can get to 10% anyway, um, and you want at least 10% of the area covered. Now again, not always possible, but this is the sort of thing you talk about with regards to your discussion and all this stuff when you write it up. All right, so quadrats. Now, really useful for stationary organisms like plants, fungus, moss, etc. You basically, you measure the total area of the population, a uh, total area where the population lives, okay? Take a square that is a quadrat, depending on what it is. It can be a one by one meter um, square like this, or you can divide the whole area up into grids. The other way, we'll say that in a second. Um, you randomly throw it, if you've got this, or you randomly, randomly choose um, the squares that you're going to look at and count, and you count the number of organisms within that square. And you repeat that as many times as is practical. Um, then you average the number of organisms per quadrat, and then you multiply this up to the size of the area. And that tells you roughly how many of those plants, moss, whatever, is in that um, that area that you're looking at. So here are the two ways to do it. You've got your squares and you just throw them out there. Now, if you've got 100 meters by 100 meters, um, that's probably enough. And the other way to do it is this. So you here are your squares, and you just randomly assign them. Now. You would do this with if you're looking at large, so these would be fine for grasses and shrubs, little things that you could fit inside a square that you could throw. This one would be most effective over here. This would be most effective when you're talking about uh, trees. So really big things, you can't quite throw it high enough to get it over the giant eucalypt. All right, capture release, mobile organisms. So it's often, it's not reasonable to count every individual in the population. Okay, so first, you wanna capture as humanly as possible. A large, as large a sample as possible. You then want to tag those captured and re-release them. So tag those captured and release. Get rid of that D at the end. So tag them um, and then set them free. You want to capture a second sample. This is important. Okay. You want to count the number already tagged and we're going to kill those recaptures and that actually fits into this circle here in our diagram. Um, and then you use this formula. So the first capture times the second capture divided by recaptures. That tells you roughly how many you have. Okay, so we'll work through that here. We'll have an example. So first capture, second capture times recap divided by recaptures. Or N1 times M2, N2 divided by N3. So in this case, we've got eight captured, eight recaptured. Two of those were, sorry, Eight captured the second capture, two of those recaptures. This gives us 32. Okay, now if you do the maths, we're at about 24 here. Okay, so it's actually not that accurate, but it's not perfect right here. It's not meant to be, it's an estimation. The larger the sample size, the more the accuracy, the higher the levels of accuracy. 
All right, so that's sampling. And we'll practice some of these techniques, most likely in the capture and recapture in class. See you later.